Hey, it's Deborah Peters. Welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. Happy Friday. It's the day after Valentine's Day. I hope everybody got some love last night and you're all feeling really good about the weekend. Super excited to have you join me today. Today's show is all about disruption. And so curious if you're a disruptor and if you are, what part of your existence are you disrupting? So that's what we're talking about today, everybody. We're talking about disruption. I am definitely a disruptor and I've been disrupting all sorts of things and people and institutions and thoughts, beliefs, emotional programs for many, many years. And uh, it's not like I go out there and try to be a disruptor. It's just kind of the, the nature of my personality. So I uh, just want to hear from all you disruptors today. And I'm going to just pause right here and say howdy. So we have Michael and Charles and Dickie. Nice to have you join me. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to give you the link to my brand new website. I want you guys to jump on there and take a look at it. I've been talking about this thing for weeks and weeks. It feels like it just kind of went on and on and on. Finally, we got it up. We got all the issues resolved with the server and um, even all the content that we lost. We're, we're still adding some of that back um, and also some new content because my life moves at a really fast pace. I'm booking all sorts of projects and speaking engagements every single day. So just keep checking in there for all of the updates and where I'm going to be next on the planet, what organizations I'm going to be disrupting, <laughs> and what the program is going to be about. So um, welcome. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, go ahead and and type in, tell me what you do, where you live, and uh, how is it you're being a disruptor in this world of ours, in this, in this ever-changing world of ours? How are you being a disruptor? Because I think that's a really powerful thing, is to be a disruptor. I'm just gonna type this in the box here. There we go. Got you in the chat box. So today's like super casual day for me. Hi Bjorn from the Netherlands. Welcome. My gosh, what time is it there? I guess it's probably about 9.30 in the evening. Am I right? 9.37? So how are you being a disruptor? I think Bjorn is a disruptor in the, in the super yacht world, in the yachting world. Very excited to see you do that. And I remember when you when you first launched those projects. So it's really cool to see how you've grown and and how you've really taken charge of things. And you know I'm going to be in Amsterdam on the 8th and 9th of March, right? So uh, definitely come into the city and let's let's grab some dinner. I'm spending uh Sunday the 9th, I'm jumping on the train and heading over to Antwerp. I've got a meeting there with a potential new business partner. Um, but I'm sure we'll be able to carve out a little bit of time, right? So you're going to have to let me know how that looks for you. Um, so just curious, how are you guys disruptors? Go ahead and, and pop it into the chat. I'd love to know what you're disrupting next. I want to tell you a little bit of story. A little, a little story about my realization that um, I'm definitely a disruptor. It was a few years ago, I was heading to Europe to uh, see some clients in Monaco, and I, re I discovered that, that Virgin, Richard Branson's group, was holding a one-day conference. It was actually on the 3rd of October, and it was called uh, Disruptor. And I thought, you know, this sounds really interesting to me. I, I think this is something I would like to take in. And I, you know, you basically have to swing through either Paris or 
something, right? To change planes. So I'm I'm coming through London. I might as well stop for a couple of days and go to the Disruptor Conference. It was absolutely brilliant. There were some great speakers there. And it was a wonderful opportunity to meet Richard and and his team and, and just kind of get to know what they're up to. And I really like the thinking. And I think that needs to be something that we all focus on in our lives is how are we disrupting our own thinking? How are we disrupting our own current reality to allow in the space for other realities to come in so we can experience more in life so we can actually experience more of ourselves. I think that's where the whole disruptor thing really pays off. When we think we're experiencing the world, what we're really doing is we're experiencing more of who we are, the potential of that, the possibilities that we could be creating and the talent that is perhaps dormant within us the gifts that we haven't yet explored. And I know how that can be. You know, we get caught up in doing what we think we have to do in order to pay the bills and uh, move the business, move the needle on the business, move the needle on the bottom line. All of the things that we feel obligated to. And what fascinates me, because I'm, I'm a study of human behavior, what fascinates me is, you know, we get these ideas as human beings, we get an idea and we move along and we take that idea and we develop it into a process or we develop it into something more tangible. And then that tangibility actually starts to really show up as something we need to pay attention to because it's starting to turn into the, the results that we were asking for. And then it, it seems like something kind of clicks. And I think the click is where we go from, hey, I get to do this really cool project to, wow, now I have to go take care of this business because I said I would. And therein lies the whole challenge. Therein lies the complete disconnect from the greatness you're, you're creating to the obligation that you're cultivating in your existence that you then start to build up resentment to. So let me just pause on that note for a minute and say hi to some people. So hi, Phil, and hey, Tony. Thank you for stopping by. <clears throat> um, what's interesting about this conversation is that we create our own restrictions in life. We create our own blocks. And most importantly, we create our own experiences. So if we're looking at whatever it is that's going on in your life, you know, just take a, a 360 right now and just have a look around your life, like the different sort of categories of your relationships, your health, your wealth, um, your happiness, your business growth, your profitability, just kind of take a moment and sort of do like a 360 on these different areas of your life and just sort of give it a bit of a, a rating, if you will, on a scale of one to five. So five being the most, one being the least. How fulfilling is this? How happy are you? I mean, happiness could even be an area of your life that you might want to look at. And how much of those um, ratings are actually feeling like an obligation, but yet they once were a creative thought. And this is, this is the thing I wanna talk about today is 
it's not just so much going out into the world and disrupting things around you or disrupting your company's um, structure or or value proposition or you know shaking up a relationship it's not just about that I mean those are all external things what I really wanted to get into today was talking about disrupting you you disrupting you so that's going to be the topic of our conversation and I just want to pause and say hi to David and also David Alberto nice to have you guys hey I put a link in the chat for my new website so I would really love it if you guys popped by there and and had a look around that would be super cool and of course my YouTube channel is neuroengineering Institute I've spent um, probably the past year building out as much content as I can like every week and so I'd like you to pop by please and and thank you for subscribing and for sharing it with your tribe because now that we have loaded up all this amazing content that you'd probably have to pay thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands times ten dollars to get that kind of information and mind tech and business growth hacks um, it's there for you free and so I would ask that you just head on over there subscribe hit the like button share and uh, contribute to building up that subscriber base that would be really really cool so thank you for that so yeah just talking about being um, a disruptor of you and here's what's been going on with me you know this past man it's almost been a year you know since I, I started disrupting me in a really pivotal way hi Elena um, so yeah it began uh, it began last uh, March actually and I just really started disrupting all of my um, what's the word I want to use like the the limits that I was hitting in my in my business growth and I, I was just decided to do a serious overhaul on the way I had things structured and my attitude toward it and how much um, I was willing to allow to actually come to me with ease and so in doing that um, I was rolling into a birthday and so I have this theory and the theory is is that the 90 days rolling up to our birthday is when like shit really starts to fall apart <laughs> if you know what I mean it's like if you're paying attention at all I mean some of you may be totally checked out with yourself I don't know but I'm assuming if you're on my show if you're here right now that you're pretty conscious and by conscious I mean you have a really really decent well cultivated sense of yourself and you're able to to really pay attention to what's going on with you and seeing it from different angles right from how you view yourself how you view the world uh, your model of the world and how you see yourself in the world so you know those multiple angles and dimensions there hi Jorge nice to have you um, I want you guys to go ahead and type in the chat how are you being a disruptor now it's, it's interesting because I asked you guys to do that and then I don't see any comments so I'm gonna hold you to it this time <laughs> I want you guys to put some comments in there now um, let me just pin this there we go oh I see a thumbs up thank you so much okay so thumbs up are great type information I want to know how are you being a disruptor share so we can all learn from you you know maybe you're being a disruptor in a way that we haven't thought of yet and I certainly would love to to know what that might be okay so last year rolling into my birthday starts in March I got to be careful what you wish for right so I make this 
declaration to myself that I'm going to disrupt my current state of being uh, financially and also in terms of my fulfillment and what I feel that based on my output, what I'm putting out into the world, what I'm putting into my business is actually fulfilling me and coming back through me as something that is really inspiring. So I go on this journey and I start disrupting my points of view. That was my first step. I'm disrupting my points of view. I'm disrupting my belief systems. I had gone through a process where I'd invested a whack of money in sales funnels and um, chat bots and, and webinar platforms and digital marketing. Um, and there's just something about that that wasn't clicking. And that was kind of the thing that really woke me up and said, Hey, maybe you need to really reinvent things. And that thing was me. So fast forward into July, which is my birthday's at the end of July. And um, I had disrupted things in a gargantuan way. I mean, I seriously blew up uh, a business conference that we ran in June. Um, I totally aligned with the wrong people. And um, the whole thing just blew up. It created like this massive financial loss. But the learnings from it were just so profound. You know, that old saying of, of polarity, right? Where you, you learn, you discover what you don't want and, and, it, and it shines a light on what you do want. And so, you know, I realized there was so much about the way I have my business model structured that wasn't even enjoyable. And so I changed all of it. And it takes a minute, you know, it's like, I think the biggest challenge that people have is um, thanks for the love. I appreciate that, Aaron. Um, I think the biggest challenge that most people have is they ask for something in their lives. And I'm, I'm, hey, I'm totally guilty of this, you know, because I'm a, I'm a fireball, I'm a fire sign, you know, I'm a disruptor, so. When I make a decision, I'm just like, all right, let's get this baby done. Let's see some traction, you know, gain momentum quick. It's like, I'm like a rocket ship. It's like, let's get this baby off the ground. So, um, I think the biggest challenge that most of us have as human beings is we ask for something. And then when it doesn't show up really fast, we're, we're like, disappointed or even worse we start doubting it and this is the the biggest neuroscience tool that i teach is how to actually ask for something you know from yourself aka the universe i don't know if you guys are aware of this or not but you are the universe so you can stop looking outside of yourself for the universe to give you something. It's like the Santa Claus syndrome is over. You know, if you were, remember when you were a kid and Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy. And I think we were conditioned to look outside of ourselves for the uh, physical, tangible manifestation of that which we wanted. And so we got trained that that's the way life works. And it's so easy to transfer these um, thought patterns from one sort of entity to the next. So we can go from, okay, uh, Santa Claus is deciding if we're naughty or nice, if we're good or bad. And, and determining if we get a gift or not. And so then as we grow up into adults, you know, obviously we don't believe in Santa Claus anymore, but then we start saying things like, well, it wasn't meant to be, or if it's meant to be, it'll happen. Or 
um, I guess I just, you know, wasn't supposed to have that at this time or be that at this time. Like whatever your, your internal dialogue is that convinces you that you're actually powerless. So um, I'm going to pause that thought for a second and I'll get into it again in a, in a moment. I just want to say hi to some people. So hello to Marcus and hello to Celzo and hi Kimberly Roblin. Hi Tozi. Did I pronounce that correctly? Is that um, an Italian name? I'm curious. So, um, you know, I've been asking during this show for you guys. Oh, I got some yeses. Okay, cool. I've been asking during this show for you guys to type in how you are being a disruptor. So please take a second and uh, pop it into the chat box. I'm very, very curious. So yeah, you know, it's just the whole concept that we're separate from ourselves is really something that we hold ourselves back with. So last year as I was taking myself through this massive disruptor process with myself, um, I really blew shit up, you guys, like for reals. And to the point where um, this is February and next month will be 12 months. So I've taken myself through a 12 month reinvention process. And let me tell you, it has not been light because every, well, not every, I'm sure there's more work to do, but a lot of my blind spots, um, hidden patterns that I was oblivious to have rolled up for me to look at. And I was uh, doing a little bit of work on this um, last evening when I got home from Valentine's and um, I wonder if any of you can relate to this. Are any of you a people pleaser? I'm just really curious. Do you find yourself doing things for people? Um, <laughs> thank you, Aaron. I really appreciate that. So um, I, I had this like in my face realization last night that I probably spent most of my life denying myself self-love because I was a people pleaser. And um, it, just, um, it just shone a light on every area of my life. And really also on how I had even impacted my income being a people pleaser, how I had impacted my, my health being a people pleaser. So, you know, it's, it's not to say that uh, you should stop being of service, but you really have to get perspective on it. You really do. Because there's a fine line between being of service and to subjugating yourself in a way that takes away your power and puts your, and you put yourself down or you hold yourself in a space where you're not able to receive what you are asking for. So I'd like to invite you today to start to consider, hi John, nice to have you. Um, I'd like you to start to consider and really have a look at, at your life as, you know, where are you being this people pleaser that you could go in and be a disruptor with that pattern and change that pattern and put yourself into a, uh, a higher vibrational state of being where you can receive more. So I was making uh, some notes. Hold on. I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Pardon me. 
um, I was making some notes about what it is that uh, I really am able to, to do with clients and languaging it um, kind of in a, in a new sort of way. So when I'm working with clients, it's really about congruency. And most people come through life, most people go through life, and they're not congruent with themselves. They're disconnected. So I'll give you an example of that. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's also referred to as split energy. So what is split energy? So split energy is when you have a desire and it's going this way, you know, you you want to take yourself on this direction in your life, right? Um, and you're enthusiastic about it and you're inspired by it and, and it lights you up and you can, you can feel the, the beauty of it and, and what it would be like to live that experience. And then over here, you have all this doubt and negative self-talk and limiting beliefs and you start talking smack to yourself about it and then over here you're like yeah but i love this idea and i think this is tremendous and you're starting to get feedback from people that they would like to be a part of it or that they could see the vision as well but then you go over here and you start doubting and you go into fear and then you find excuses and it just is like split energy. You can't go two directions at the same time. It's not possible. And that is what we call incongruency. So, um, hey, so Aaron, aren't we all at some level a people pleaser? It is an old survival mechanism. We had to be accepted to be part of the tribe for many reasons. Our brains are so amazing. Isn't that the truth? It is an old program, certainly, and it's archaic and it doesn't fit anywhere anymore. Like it is so not even, well, it's just not healthy. You know, it's like super dysfunctional. Um, so this split energy, you know, will keep you from your greatness. It will. And this was the realization I had last March. I'm like, this is, this is insane. Like I have talent off of the chain and it wasn't reaping the benefits and it wasn't reaping the results that I knew I was capable of. And I had to shake me up. And lo, whoa, let me tell you, did I shake me up? Like my whole entire existence just like whoo, did a 360, actually a 180, did a 180. So, you know, um, the congruency between the relationship that you have with your inner being and the relationship you have with your ego, you know, bringing those two into harmony with one another so that um, they can actually communicate effectively and work together. The ego is not a bad thing. You know, I think the ego gets a bad rap. It is not a bad thing. However, if you leave it to its own devices and you don't put it in check, it can ruin your life. You know, it can keep you small, it can keep you unhealthy. It can make you unhealthy. It can keep you from your greatness. It can keep you from taking action on insights and ideas and epiphanies. It can keep you from self-awareness. Like it could just really jack you up, you know? So you've got to get this alignment between you and you in order to be in harmony and stop the whole like split energy thing. 
So I was making some notes this morning. I was actually talking to a client and um, a potential client and I was doing a discovery session and they were asking me like, well, so tell me what it is, you know, that you do. And, and we were discussing their business and I said, well, basically um, I focus, I get the client to focus. So I get my clients to focus into alignment between the conscious part of them and the unconscious part of you. So the conscious is the part you're aware of, hence the term conscious. And the unconscious is the part of you that you're not aware of, but you could be aware of and actually leverage to infinity if you have the tools. So when you bring your conscious awareness into alignment with your unconscious, which is infinite, boom, like you start to tap into the capacity of your greatness that is immeasurable. And so um, obviously to be, to be an expert at that, you know, I have to do that on myself. And that's what I've just spent the last 11 months doing. And it's interesting because my life didn't stop during this process. My business, I didn't put things on hold. You know, I still was standing on stage of speaking. I was still teaching business boot camps. I was still coaching companies. I was still doing everything in my life that I do. And um, cause that is, that is life. Life is not this external stuff that we think we're supposed to do or that we think we're here for to buy stuff, to buy material stuff. That's not why we're on the planet we came here to have fun and you can't have fun if you've got a bunch of baggage a bunch of emotional programming like limiting beliefs and negative emotions like fear doubt anger resentment guilt grief or limiting beliefs like uh, it's hard or um, I'm too old or I'm too young or I'm too short or I'm too tall or I'm too blonde or I'm too, uh, dark skinned or light skinned or I'm female or I'm male or like whatever your story is like that shit will keep you in turmoil and none of it's true and none of it matters. It's programs. It's like the software in your computer. And as much as you can load that up, you can unload it. So get rid of it, let it go. And how do you do that? Well, you don't do it by giving it attention. And I want to share this with you and then we'll kind of cut it off because I've been keeping these shows to around 30 minutes just for sake of people being busy. Um, want to respect your time. So um, you're not going to get rid of it by focusing on it. It's like when you start working on clearing your debt, you just get more debt. So you want to instead, I mean, you, you can clear up your debt that way, but, but really the faster way to clear up your debt, or to change any area of your life is to focus on the antithesis of it. And so focus on the, the abundance, focus on building new revenue, focus on the opposite. Right. But I think there really does have to have like a moment where you say enough. So whether that's um, looking at your bank account and saying, I'm, I'm just not doing this smallness anymore. I'm just not. And then changing that into creation. So now I'm, I'm, I'm going to go from, okay, no more of this. 
Now we're going to go to creation. We're going to create, we're going to generate, and we're going to receive, right? So create, generate, receive, create up oh, and choose. So create, generate, choose, and receive. I remember years and years ago, like probably 93 and um, 95, I, I spent probably about a five-year period where I was a Deepak Chopra groupie and I just kind of went to every seminar that he had and I always sat in the front row and I took tons of notes and it was brilliant. There was one particular um, statement that he made that just made really good sense to me and he basically took the word God and he broke it down into an acronym and he said the G stood for generating, the O stands for organizing, and the D stands for delivery. And I thought, wow, that is really brilliant. Generating, organizing, and delivery. So you see, here's the deal. We are not an onion. So for any of you that have studied any psychology or, or have heard this terminology, it's erroneous. It's just simply not true. It's, it's, it's an allopathic medical model of psychology that is like based in Newtonian physics, which no longer exists in reality on this planet. It just doesn't fit anymore. So we're really in a quantum physics reality. It's multi-dimensional simultaneously. So you can be in parallel universes all at one time. And essentially the way it works is we are a nucleated sphere. And what that means is the more you focus on rooting out the problem, the more the problem propagates itself. So the more problem becomes obvious and in your face and in your life. So instead, it's really about creating the positive. It's really about getting in there and looking at what it is that you want to create. And hi, John Ortiz and Odile, nice to have you. Getting in there and looking at what it is you want to create and then putting your focus on creation. Now, in terms of that, the visualization process is not enough. And I'm going to be talking about that in my next show. So next week on Tuesday at 1230, we'll go into that. Um, and I want you to just to really realize that you have the capacity to change anything. You can create anything and you can receive anything and you can be anything and you can do anything. And when you decide to believe that and to know that, then it is true for you. And until that moment, it will always be out of arm's length. And it's really your choice. You get to decide. And guess what? There's no wrong answer. So you can decide to limit yourself and that's fine. You can decide to set yourself free and that's fine too. Hi Robert, nice to see you. Um, and that's my show. You know, it's about being a disruptor, disrupting your entire reality and trusting that you can handle the changes because you're the creator of that reality. And see, this is where I think a lot of people get afraid of change is if you don't truly know that you're the creator of your own reality, then you'll be in a place where you're afraid to change. And the reason most people are afraid to change is because they think their lives will be out of control. But the truth of the matter is you're in control of being out of control. So there's just, I mean, I just, feel like it needs to be demystified once and for all because i'll tell you guys i i look around on youtube i see what other coaches are putting out there in terms of 
erroneous content. I look around on social media, on Facebook, and I see what other people are, 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 are saying and selling. And um, you have to learn to see through the, the veil of what's really being put out there. You really do. And how are you going to know unless you really truly self-discover? You have to learn to trust yourself, you know? So, so that's my show. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I, I really, truly love being able to do this. I think it's, it's a gift. It's so easy now to, to be able to pop on here and share with you. And, and um, I always have more <laughs> content than we have time for. So definitely get on over to my my YouTube page and subscribe and like and share and, um, and get on over to my website. I've got a couple of events coming up. I have tons of speaking engagements this month. The Beverly Hills Greater Los Angeles Association of Realtors has invited me to do a program for them on the 22nd of March. And the Korean Real Estate um, Association it has invited me to come in on the 21st and speak at an event that they're doing. And then of course, um, I've got my European events and we're running a boot camp here in Los Angeles on March 1st and April 25th and 26th. And uh, later in March, the shift change and heal your money story online course will be available. So I feel that um, I've covered all the bases of everything that you need to expand your life and to really truly step into the authenticity, authenticity of who you are and to build out your business and to ramp up your revenue and to attract the right team. I mean, I'm, I, if there's anything else that I can create for you, any subject matter that you'd like some assistance with, definitely please let me know, stick it in the subject line and, um, and we'll work on it with my team for content for the next show. So wishing you a blessed weekend. Thanks for all the love and the hearts and the likes and the shares and joining me. And I'll see you on Tuesday um, at 1230. So invite your tribe. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye.